Let's go to let's go. Oh, I don't know. How about miles from Denver? Miles from Denver. Welcome to the program. What's on your mind today? Hey, David, good to talk to you again. Likewise. All right. So I actually had a question and it kind of refers to what I've been thinking about ever since the Katie Britt response to the State of the Union. And it's I mean, just flat out like that was the most crazy thing I think I've ever seen in a yeah, long time. It was nuts. Yeah. And so I'm thinking about the disconnect between like right wing policy, you know, people in government who actually have the power to implement things and the actual right wing voters. And I'm thinking, well, I know for a fact there's certain personal interests of those right wing voters, such as like, for example, I believe polls said that they actually did not agree with the Roe v. Wade overturn. Right. If I'm correct about that. But on the other end, they're also like, you know, they're spouting off the anti trans rhetoric, the anti immigration rhetoric, because they've been tricked into thinking these are actual issues that are going to affect their personal lives when, of course, they're not. So I'm thinking, you know, there's states like Alabama, which Katie Britt, I actually believe, does come from. They're passing things like, you know, the IVF bans and requiring like ID to use pornography sites, which is, again, totally bat, bat ass crazy. So, of course, if they cared about children, they may have opted to pass legislation to mitigate the cause of the highest death rate, a.k.a. gun violence. Right. So where do you think this disconnect is coming from? Like, we know that right wing voters, because of polls, they do want things to be implemented to help them. And their actual right wing constituents aren't getting those things. So what do you think the disconnect is really coming from? There's two layers of disconnect here. Number one is that even though, as you point out, a lot of individual voters have a set of priorities, they are electing officials that are to their right. And what I mean by this is if you look at the corpus of elected officials that represent the United States nationally, right? So House and Senate. It is to the right of where the American people are. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. Part of it is where funding comes from and that there's a lot of right wing organizations that are funneling money towards elected officials who are to the right of the electorate overall. So that's one thing, which is the electorate is to the left of our elected officials. And there's a number of reasons why why that is. The other part of it is that some of the things that people say they want, they don't really want when it when the, the rubber meets the road. And very quickly oh, yeah. they change their mind. And so, for example, the abortion thing is is an interesting one because the best thing for the anti-abortion movement was Roe v. Wade. And as soon as Roe v. Wade was overturned, two things happened. One, a lot of Republicans said, wait a second, we actually didn't want that. The idea of raising money to stop abortion, that was interesting. But now that Roe v. Wade's been overturned, we actually think abortion should be legal in most cases. So that was one problem. And then problem number two is obviously once you once you do it, then you can no longer raise money on it. And then that also forces a further change in the dynamics of what elected officials present. So I think there's a bunch of different dynamics at play here. It, it's not just one thing, but the, the biggest issue that could be solved is if we had closer to 100 percent participation in elections, that would solve a lot of this. It wouldn't make it perfect. But if we had more people voting such that their desires were actually better represented in our elected officials, that would be a partial solution to what we're talking about. I oh, absolutely I agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, it's unfortunate, but I mean, I am uh, I'm a little idealistic when it comes to voting. I know that it's not realistic to think, you know, like because the last time we talked, it was talking about how I'd like to see right to living wage, uh, you know, a fix of the homelessness problem, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And obviously that's not going to happen anytime soon, even if we get the voting uh, people out there as much as you're talking about. But it will go in the right direction. And, you know, I'm just I'm still thinking about this because like that Katie Britt thing really had me just brewing in my mind. I'm like, this is insane. Like, how can right wing voters they, they put this person into the Senate? which isn't just Congress, it's the Senate. I mean, you know, the House, it's the Senate. Yep. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, you know, like, is it just that the senators are that out of touch or are they just getting very comfortable with their kind of fascistic tendencies here? Like, are they just, they know that they're kind of, you know, full of it, but they're just doing it anyway because they just know that it'll get them to vote because, you know, they uh, <laughs> manufactured outrage and such. I think Katie Britt did what she did in the State of the Union response because she really thought it would be impactful and people would be like, wow, that was that was an amazing thing. That, that was great. I think she was completely disconnected from how it would be perceived, to be totally frank. Yeah, I mean, no, she came off as that way because she obviously to even get that far. You, have to be, you know, at least pretty well learned and intelligent to a certain yep. aspect. Not every person in the Senate can, you know, match that. I mean, we got Marjorie Taylor Greene in the Congress. We got, you know, Lauren Boebert, who thankfully will be voted out soon in my state. 
Yeah, I mean, that's just what I want to know your opinion on, like what you think is going on there, because there's just this crazy disconnect. There always has been between what they actually want at the end of the day when the when you said the rubber meets the road. Yep, absolutely. Miles from Denver, appreciate the call. We're going to continue monitoring all of it. For years now, I have been using a Ridge wallet. I've had a Ridge wallet at this point way before they became a sponsor. They are celebrating their 11th anniversary. A Ridge wallet can hold up to 12 cards plus your cash and it stays flat and comfortable in your pocket. So much slimmer than anything I've used. I don't want to throw my back off kilter like happened to George Costanza with one of those oversized wallets. So this is great. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles, including ceramic powder and leather. It was designed with RFID blocking materials to protect you from any digital thievery. And Ridge even gives you the option of adding a little air tag strap to the wallet so you'll never lose it again. Ridge also offers awesome key cases, which can be used to secure one to six keys and importantly, prevent the keys from jingling. Ridge has over three million customers, over one hundred thousand five star reviews. It's the wallet I've been using for years now. And if you don't love your Ridge product, you can send it back for a full refund up to a full year after you buy it comes, of course, with a lifetime warranty because of the extra durable material. Go to Ridge.com slash Pacman and use code Pacman for 10 percent off. The link is down below.